Rachel and uh, and I'm from the Okay, and I just want to 
say, feel free to record all you like, take as many pictures as you want, because you'll want to listen to the training again and again. So I use my phone audio recording on the iPhone and uh, stick it on the table. It's amazing how much how easy it's recording and then play it back to yourself over and over. So yeah, we welcome that. Hello everybody! <laughs> Zoe. I am beyond excited to have us all here in this room together. I don't know about anybody else, but I've been going to Leadership Academy put on by other teams for the past 18 months now, and I've taken so much from them. And we've sort of had this big vision to put on our own one for a long time now. So between us three and the other regional vice presidents and some area managers, we decided that everybody that was in the international team, so for anyone that doesn't know what that means, that means that we have a national vice president at so the top level in another country. So we're kind of over in the UK, doing our thing, just trying to work out what's working, what doesn't work, you know, <laughs> see what sticks. And uh, so we all put our heads together to put on this event. So I just want to see who's in the room from what region, so that we can have a good idea of who's, who's come from where. So, the regions that we've got, if you could stand up, if you are in the Wales region. Woo!
um, and spoke in front of maybe 40, let alone 150 people today. Um, so have a wonderful time. Thank you so much, guys, and um, enjoy the rest of the day. Okay, so I'm just going to introduce our first speaker, um, Executive Regional Vice President Zoe Adams. So, Zoe had a successful career as a podiatrist, building her own private practice and working for the NHS in podiatric surgery. Okay, so she joined Harvard in June 2012 and became an area manager in June 2013, three weeks after having her daughter Jessica. Okay, stepping out of dietary to be a full time mom of two and an Arbonne consultant, Zoe became a regional vice president in March 2015. She's also an AIT and an ACE award winner this year. Thank you so much. Thank you. I didn't have to walk right far. <laughs> Good morning. It's a pleasure to stand up here today and speak in front of some of the best people on the planet, Arbonne Consultants. <laughs> I get to start today's incredible training with the subject of focus. So I have Gary Keller and Jay Papasan's book, The One Thing, to thank for helping me write today's training. If you haven't read it, write it down on your action list at the back of your notebook. If you don't already do this, then go to the back of your notebook and write action at the top and anything you hear from today that you know you need to take home and implement into your business, then write it on a list at the back so it can get lost in the rest of your notes. The doors to the world have been flung wide open and the view that's available is staggering. Through technology and innovation, opportunities abound and possibilities seem endless. As inspiring as this can be, it can be equally overwhelming. The unintended consequence of abundance is that we are bombarded with more information and choices in a day than our ancestors received in a lifetime. Harried and hurried, a nagging sense that we attempt too much and accomplish too little haunts our days. We sense intuitively that the path to more is through less, but the question is where to begin. From all that life has to offer, how do you choose? How do you make the best decisions possible, experience life at an extraordinary level, and never look back, live the one thing? But do any of you feel like this, overwhelmed, bombarded? Today, I'm going to give you some strategies to help you move towards experiencing life at an extraordinary level. Does that sound good? So let's start with that concept of multitasking. Who here multitasks? <laughs> Uh, who enjoys it, or even thinks they're good at it, or even thinks they get more done by multitasking. <laughs> multitasking is merely the opportunity to screw up more than one thing at a time. <laughs> multitasking is a scam. Researchers found that the amount of extra time it costs someone when they multitask, or task switch, is from 25 to 100%, depending on the complexity of the task. You simply can't effectively focus on two important things at the same time, or two or more than important things. And so in this diagram, it shows if you, um, you set, somebody set out their primary work, and then they switch to a different task, so then if they try and reorientate them back into the, the work they started, they get distracted, they might an email popped up or a Facebook message popped up. Then they switch back and reorientate themselves back to the, the work they started in the first place, and it takes them twice as long as if they just started to work and focused on that one thing until they finished it. Hello? Hello? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you think. Oh. Hello? Oh! That's better. Okay, so do you think I could deliver this training while multitasking? Hello. Yeah. 
Oh, I did, yeah, hold on. Hang on. Oh, hold on. I've had a, I've had a Facebook message. Um, so, um, and hang on a minute. Oh, someone's liked my post on Facebook that wrote leadership training. You know, it just wouldn't work, would it? <laughs> you would feel that, uh, well, for one, it would take me all day to deliver it, and Peter would get really annoyed with me. And um, another, um, it, you would feel that I didn't consider you as important because you don't have my full attention. So as well as the time factor, there are lots of other negatives to multitasking, especially when it comes to building relationships and rapport. And that's a whole other training in itself. So you'd be pleased to know that I'm not going to multitask. So the phone is going off. Facebook off, web browser closed, and uh, you get my 100% focus on you, on delivering a great training so you can grow, and together we can grow our Arbonne businesses. So why am I here? And there are, there are a hundred of other things I could have chosen to do today. Instead, why did I choose this? And why did I choose you, lovely people? Um, and the same for you. Why did you choose to be here with me when others didn't? One ninth of an iceberg is underwater. What you see is just the tip of everything that is there. All you're seeing today is the tip of an iceberg. What you, don't, um, no, what you see is determined by what you don't see. The more productive people are, the more purpose and priority are pushing and driving them. The best way to profit is through purpose-driven priority. So basically, it all boils down to my why and yours. Our why lies beneath the surface and pushes us to make this a priority. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. Our why enables us to spend these six hours together today. And the truth is, there is nowhere else I'd rather be than with such an incredible bunch of people who have chosen to prioritize Arbonne as well. So our why then leads to productivity, also known as activity, which then leads to profit. Who would like more profit in their business? <laughs> Personal productivity is the building block to all business profit. The two are inseparable. You can't be unproductive and still have an immensely profitable business. Great businesses are built one productive person at a time, and that starts with you. If you're not making enough profit, you need to look beneath the surface and revisit your purpose and your why. So I just want to focus on that statement for a minute. The great businesses are built one productive person at a time. Often I see people looking for that big break in network marketing, and that's not how it works. We sponsor one person and teach and train them how to sponsor. We sponsor another person and teach and train them how to sponsor, and so on. And eventually we have sponsored enough people and shown them how to sponsor enough people that our team and our business gains momentum and grows and grows. So productivity is not just about being a workhorse, keeping busy or burning the midnight oil. It's about priorities, planning and fiercely protecting your time. So please don't confuse productivity with busyness. Allow what matters most to drive your day. To achieve an extraordinary result, you must choose what matters most and give it all the time it demands. So how do you do that? Ask a focusing question. Do you start with a big picture question? What is my one thing? And this goes back to your purpose and your why. I have narrowed down my one big thing to transformation. Transforming the lives of myself and others, and that can be financially, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And with Arbonne, we have the gift to transform lives in every sense. So then I need to take it down to a small focus. What's the one thing I can do right now to transform others? Right now, it's to deliver a training to the best of my ability and empower you to make your Arbonne business a priority and focus. Because I know this will transform your life if you prioritize it. So it's not just about focus, it's about how narrow you can make your focus. You might be 110% focused on becoming a regional vice president. All you talk about is region, what Mercedes you're going to drive, your car presentation, you know the outfit, but have you narrowed that focus down to what you need to do right now to reach that goal? Extraordinary results are directly determined by how narrow you can make your focus. So what does your small focused Arbonne one thing look like? 
It looks like a full calendar of people waiting to be transformed by our products or business or both. Time block your Arbonne time. Time block your time off and time block your planning time. Treat Arbonne like a job. If you erase your Arbonne time, you must replace it. Block an hour each week to review your annual and monthly goals and make a note in the back of your book now and on your action list to do this. So they say we need to spend at least 10 hours a week on our network marketing business. So that's an hour and a half to two hours a day. We all have the same, same 24 hours in a day and none of us, can, we can't make time. So we have to find it. If you watch TV for two hours in an evening, there it is. There's your Arbon time. You have to find it somewhere. I like to call it being creative with my time. And as I'm winding up my business towards Nation, I will, as, as many of you know, if you follow me, I'm passionate about horse riding. And I'll say to the girls in the yard, I'm going to have to be more creative with my time as I wind up my business. So I'm enrolling them. And you might see me at strange hours as I come and ride and I'll be slotting it in here and there. And um, I, I ride in a small village and I come from a small village and uh, I ride with a lady who owns the local shop. And if you know anything about small villages, the local shop lady knows everyone and everything. And it came back to me from my dad that she'd been talking in the shop about me and she doesn't understand how I get so much done in a day and she can't believe what I do do in a day. And but it, I think sometimes it's a belief system as well. Some people only believe they can get certain, uh, so much done in a day. And I believe I can get so much more out of 24 hours than others. So um, you know, if, you, if you make it a priority, you will find those two hours in a day. So have this quote in your diary. Until my Arbon one thing is done, everything else is a distraction. Your own need to do other things instead of your one thing may be your biggest challenge to overcome. Life doesn't simplify itself the moment you simplify your focus. There's always other stuff screaming to be done, always. If something pops into your mind, write it down and carry on. Become purposeful during your time block and unlock your potential. And sometimes I can become so focused. I have um, only recently, um, this week, there was, I had a one-to-one -one with a consultant in my house. And when she left, it's only when she left, I looked around the house and went, oh my, I didn't realize how messy the house was because I hadn't noticed because I'm so focused and I'm in online or in line with my purpose of transforming lives. And that can be the lives of the people in my team already or the people yet to be in my team. <clears throat> okay, so what can your Arbonne full calendar be made up of? Reading 10 pages a day. Leaders are readers. So reading 10 pages a day is in line with my purpose of transforming myself and others. So I have consultants who think they can skip this step. Ask any VP in the room if they've got to their position without reading. You won't find one. You need to be reading skill-based information such as Eric Warre and industry info such as The Business of the 21st Century by Robert Kiyosaki and personal development and a great place to start is The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. So you're mixing it up with skills and personal development. Listening to 20 minutes of audio a day. SoundCloud is a great place to start. It's free. You can listen to it on any um, device that's connected to the internet. Donna Johnson, follow her on SoundCloud, and she has a recording that comes out every Sunday. And you can, I have it on my phone, in my pocket when I'm ironing. I can play them you know, when I'm around the house, getting ready in the morning. So SoundCloud, and there's plenty of YouTube. You can find so much on YouTube, TED Talks. If you don't know what a TED Talk is, put that into YouTube and you'll find them. And I know some VPs make it their goal to listen to one TED Talk every single day. Check and update your Facebook status. And check and reply to WhatsApp, emails, Facebook messages, and check the team group pages. Now I find I put um, the important pages um, that I follow in my favorites and have a system for checking them once or twice a day. So you don't feel like you've been bombarded because you're constantly looking at it and seeing things coming up. But, and you can feel certain that you know you've checked them that day and you've, your notifications have all been checked through in a systematic way. So you haven't missed anything and you don't feel bombarded at the same time. Check your web stats daily and write them down and check the source. So the source, I would check the source once a week. They put the back order reports on here. 
our Arbonne um, monthly newsletter. So go in there, that's where Arbonne posts our um, relevant information, it's important to you. So then you've got your skills to building your business and filling the calendar, and there'll be more trainings today on this. So building your active candidate list and adding to it daily. Then your most important skill from Eric Warre, skill number two, the invite skill. So this is how you actually go about filling that calendar. Your calendar will be full of one-to-ones or two-to-one coffee dates. So that's meeting a prospect with your sponsor who will explain the business and help them teach and train you. Product drops, business launches, workshops, and follow-up. So there'll be more trainings today to take you into more detail on those things that will be in your calendar. So in summary, find your purpose, prioritize your business, block out your Arbonne time, protect your Arbonne time. If you are raised, you must replace it. And use your block time to move you towards your Arbonne goals and purpose. To have that full calendar of people waiting to be transformed by your business or products. So thank you for listening to my training and enjoy the rest of your trainings today. And then, yeah, thank you very much. Wow, that was absolutely amazing. I was frantically taking notes. And um, my little claim to fame was like, I bought Zoe that book, didn't I? You did. I did. <laughs> and she bought me the exact same copy, yeah. So, yeah, it's a fantastic book. Please do read that. It's an amazing training. Okay, so next up, we have Executive Area Manager Jennifer Cowie. Jennifer started her business in November 2014, and she became a district manager in April 2015 and an area manager in the June. She is amongst two little girls who are four and six and wife to district manager, Danny Cowie. Jennifer is an area in Paradise Achiever in 2016. So welcome, Jennifer Cowie. Okay, so hello everybody. Um, wow, what an incredible day so far. We've had some fabulous training from Zoe and we've got more in store. So can everybody join me just briefly with a round of applause for all of our fantastic trainers today. <laughs> There are many reach out methods within our business. We've got workshops, product presentations, or bag drop off, sample packs, discover our bonds, Zoom calls, meet the products, and of course, the one to one coffee date. So today I'm going to train on the one to one coffee date, which I absolutely love. But all of the reach out methods are equally important um, to learn so that you can teach or train your team to do the same. So ultimately, what we want to do is get in front of people and present our business opportunity. And this is how your business will grow. So I believe that the key to becoming an ENVP is to nail the one-to-one -one coffee date and to always lead with the business. You need to practice, practice, and practice that presentation until you know it inside out and back to front. If you can't explain your business, you aren't going to be able to grow that business. If you don't know the presentation and come across as vague, people will perceive that as being unconfident and they won't put their confidence in you. A great tip is to record yourself doing the Discover Arbonne and listen or watch it back and ask yourself, would I join me? So there are four main aspects, I think, to a one-to-one. -one. So, who do you invite? How do you invite them? The main event, the coffee date, and the follow-up. 
So who do you invite? Personally, I love the one-to-one, -one, so I'd ask anyone, but for men and professional women in particular, or mums that have just had babies, this is a great reach out method. It's great for people who won't or who are unable to attend a business launch, a Discover Armand or a workshop. The one-to-one -one is also a great approach for the cold market, which the cold market, of course, is just friends that we haven't yet got to know properly. For example, someone that you respect but probably wouldn't know them well enough to invite them into your own home. Someone you meet whilst out shopping or a local business owner. So how do you invite someone to take a look at your business? First of all, they need to be fully aware that they are meeting you to talk about the business opportunity. Okay, so a copy for a catch-up, a play date or a meal out isn't a one-to-one. -one. Unless, of course, they know that you're, you are there, your sole purpose there is to present the business opportunity to them. Don't lie to yourself by counting these as one-to-ones because you will only end up feeling frustrated with yourself. Let your prospect know that the appointment will take just an hour and then stick to that hour time slot. Be relaxed and use your own language. If you're relaxed, they will be also. If you want to be a little, oh sorry, you want to be a little cool and you don't want to come across as a hunter or too desperate to get them. An example of what to say could be, so this is if you're ringing, Hey, it's Jen, how are you? Just a quick call as I know, as you know, I have a business with Arbon. There's serious money to be made here and I would love to talk to you about it. This might be something for you, it might not. Either way is fine. When is good for you to connect? If they say yes, then obviously book the time with them. And if they um, say no or they're a little bit apprehensive, you can say something like, listen, I totally get that. I too thought this was too good to be true, but after checking it out, it's actually pretty interesting. The company is globalizing, it's an internet-based business and the products rock. There's no obligation and if after our chat it's a no, no big deal. If they're a definite no or you would rather try the indirect approach, you could also say something like, listen, I totally get that, that's absolutely fine. You have such a great reputation in business and know so many people. I know that this isn't something that you're going to do with me, but can I just explain how it works just in case you know someone that this is perfect for? You can also do the super indirect approach and ask to practice your presentation on them. You're also going to approach people in your cold market, people you meet every day in network groups, baby groups, the gym, whilst out shopping or a new Zumba class. Make a connection with them, have a conversation and build the relationship. Ask for their phone number or add them as a friend on Facebook. You could either then call, text or Facebook message. Now I've said that emails aren't great, only because in my experience, people don't always check their emails or your email goes into their junk folder and then you sat there thinking, oh, have they got my email? So an example of what to say could be, hey, it's Jen Cowie calling. Do you have a minute? We met at whatever group you met at. The reason I'm calling you is that I really enjoyed meeting you. I loved your style. You really know your stuff and I respect that. I'm looking for two or three people to join my organization and I thought you might know the right person. Would you be willing to sit down with me for half an hour to learn some more? If you decide to use this approach, at the end you would bring it back to them, so relate it back to them and say something like, it goes without saying, but I would love to have you on my team. You obviously have some great contacts and you'd be amazing at this. So the main event, the one for one. Okay. So on the way to the one-to-one, -one, I probably look a mad woman in the car, but I do positive self-talk. So I'm an ace, I'm an ace, I'm an ace. I'm a sponsoring machine. I'm going to help change this person's life. So just don't feel nervous or apprehensive. Just keep with the positive self-talk. Dress like an ENVP. You won't get another chance to make that first impression and how you present yourself is how you're actually presenting your business. So we are in the health and wellness business after all, so dress smart or just put together. Turn up early and get set up, ready for the arrival of your prospect. You either want your, your presentation in a folder or on your laptop, and you also want to bring your business pack along too, which I've left there. <laughs> um, I put in a gold bag with the right products for that person, so I'll often take a sample of you know, little trial bags or full-size products. Um, a business pack, a price list, an eye on Arbonne that is relatable to that person, and a catalogue. Smile. Bring, buy them a coffee. There we go. 
So buy them a coffee to thank them for their time. This will take an hour, so don't let it drag on for too long. So around the time it takes to drink. So I split my one to one hour into time. Oh, fabulous, thank you. <laughs> So obviously this would be an Arbon bag, but I don't have any of those left at the minute. So you've got your gold bag, you've got your catalogue, and then you've got your business pack as well. So make sure it's all clean and presentable, disinfected after the last person. This just, <laughs> this just has like the um, business information that you've already told them. And then I've also put in some meet the product sheets. And then you've got your price list as well. There's the price list in there somewhere. Also a good tip is if you're going to ask them to host something, put in a calendar at the back as well. And they can just scribble the name. Okay, so the first 10 minutes of the appointment, you are focused on them. It's all about them. Okay, so you want to find out about them and why Arbon will be a fit for them. So ask questions and be curious. This will become more natural the more you do it, but if you're stuck on what to say, find out if they enjoy their current job, if it's what they've always dreamt of doing, if they have children, and if so, how old are those children? And if they win the lottery today, what would they do? Keep that to 10 minutes. I mean, obviously don't cut in if they're still talking or set an alarm on your phone or anything. But as the conversation progresses, you can slowly turn the conversation around to the reason that you brought them there. So I might say something like, well, I invited you here today to talk about Arbon. I have a short presentation to go through, but it won't take long. It's not death by PowerPoint. It just keeps me on track and not talking until midnight. You also might want to mention that you didn't make the slideshow and that Arbon provided for it. Then you want to do your 60 second story. Again, this is key to keep it short and sweet. So Tamlin Samuel has done an excellent sound cloud on the 60 second story. So if you haven't already looked at this, please do. At this point, you present the Discover Arbon presentation. Again, keep it short, 20 to 25 minutes. Just a few key points and keep it moving along. Adjust what you say slightly for each prospect according to their age, gender, and reason why they would want to do this business. So my presentation to an 18 year old man would be completely different to a 50 year old lady. After the presentation, I always ask them on a scale of one to 10, one being never ever ever speak to me about Arbon again, and 10 being I want to get started, where would you put yourself? So providing they haven't said 10, you want to pull out your business pack and explain what's in there and hand it over, looking in the follow-up. So never ever leave a one to one without the follow-up. Yes, never leave without a follow-up. Three days is an ideal time because they get time to use the products and digest the information that you've given them. The ultimate goal is firstly a new team member to help change their life. Secondly, a preferred client so they get to use these amazing products at a discount price. Third, if they don't want to do those two, is to host an event for you. And the fourth, ask for a referral. In that order. Okay, so the fourth part, the fortune is in the follow-up. The follow-up is all about getting an answer and tying up that loose end. You either want a yes or a no to the business or a yes or a no to the products. And don't make this an emotional response. It really doesn't matter if they say no to the business and no to the products. You should just be happy because you're in activity and that is a result. So it's a happy response. And remember, a no is not a no forever. Sue Cassidy actually said no to this business for nine months and Nicola Will said no for three years. So in the follow-up, ask, can you see yourself doing this? If they say yes, then help them to sign up as an independent consultant, help them place their first order and talk through the website and offer them that one-to-one -one skin care consultation. If it's a no, ask them, um, ask them why. I mean, is this no a, I don't know? Do they have some reservations? Find out what is holding them back. This may lead to another exposure, a three-way call with your book line, but always call this a colleague or a business partner rather than your book client because that's just Arbon jargon. Or invite them to discover Arbon. If it really is a no, then ask them about the products and whether they'll be interested in receiving a 20% discount for the whole year. 
If yes, then to help them to sign up as a preferred client and offer them a one-to-one -one skincare consultation. Once they're a preferred client, then you can ask them either if they'd like to host for you to get some free products or ask them for a referral. If they aren't sure and say, well, maybe, then offer them another exposure. Or if you feel that they are ready, you can go through the four closed questions the skill five in Eric Borre goes about throwing. Most people who say no to the business will say yes to the products, but personally I haven't ever known anybody to say no to the products and then want to come back and join me in my business. So I would always suggest to go, go through with the business first and if they say no to the business, you've got the second bite of the cherry with the product. It's really okay for people to say no to the business. We all need doctors, dentists, teachers, but they all need products if they're washing. So we have a break at 12 o'clock, so I have a little challenge for you. So in the next break, I challenge you all to put this into practice and send out 10 text messages or maintain calls and invite people to that one-to-one -one coffee date with you this week. Okay, thank you very much. is right around the corner for you, so congratulations, uh, soon to be Regional Vice President. Um, my name is Sarah Lamois, and I'm an independent consultant and Regional Vice President, and I am so excited to get to interview our rising stars. Now, these are three individuals that are going to come up and really share their 60-second story. Um, Jennifer mentioned it, and they're going to each tell you their different backgrounds and just in a quick 60 seconds uh, tell you a little bit about themselves. So, would, can I have District Manager Qualification uh, Michelle Kent, District Manager Rachel Russell, and Area Manager Qualification Jay Doherty. Please, to the stage, thank you. <laughs> Arbonne in February, it's my first month. Um, yeah, basically, I'm a personal trainer. Um, 18 months ago, Danny Wells, my upline, used to come into preschool where our children went to school together. And um, she said, Oh, I've started a new business, it's Arbonne. I was like, God, Danny, what are you on about? I'm not interested, not in the slightest. And then a week later, she'd come in with some products in her hand and say, Do you want to try this? And I said, yeah. Not for me, I'm not interested. Um, and it wasn't until 18 months down the line that me and my husband started struggling with money because the business side of things is tough. Um, and Danny kind of, she said to me, oh, do you want me to explain the business? So I says, okay, just let me try some products first. So she came and introduced me to the Vistics, which, oh my God, are amazing. Um, and then I said, what can you do to my skin? How can you make me look younger? So she gave me the RV9, okay, so I fell in love with that as well. So then she told me about how much she was earning. I was like, okay, come on, have a coffee and explain it to me. So yeah, she kind of came out one day, explained the business. I didn't even need to think about it. I knew that I could do this. So. Yeah, she came around and we set up, and I'm loving every step of it. So I'm really pleased that I took this on. And yeah, it's my second month, so. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm so nervous, sorry, I'm like. Yeah. Right, so Teresa Buchanan asked me to stick to 60 seconds, which. For those of you that know me know that I talk for hours. <laughs> um, so I've actually wrote it out just because obviously the nurse might get the better of me. So hi everybody. 
My name is Jade Doherty. I'm an independent consultant for Arban International. I'm also an area manager and co qualification and will be completing this month. Thank you. So in 2008, I was a fresh faced social work graduate, raring to change the world. I did, yeah. After four years of being surrounded by a lot of cynicism and negativity, being very overworked, and I just was exhausted. I decided that this was no longer for me and did a very, very bold move and decided to quit. Um, and I didn't realize actually that that was set to change my life forever. About 18 months later, um, another long, long story that I won't get into, but the beautiful Emma Edgar um, came into my life and introduce me to Arbonne. Now, because of Arbonne, I'm building a business around two jobs that I absolutely love. Um, I also get to feel every single day hopeful and inspired by people like you guys um, and people within my close network also. Um, and I also, what I love is I get to help other people feel exactly the same way. Um, so I kind of like I'm a social worker that offers skincare, cosmetics and nutrition, <laughs> which I believe makes people happier. <laughs> um, I appreciate now the little things um, in life and I'm surrounded by people that have got the most beautiful energy and for that I'm so grateful. So thank you to Arvon and thank you to our founder Petter Mark because without him none of us would be here today. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name's Rachel. Um, I got asked at nine o'clock last night to do this, so well, thanks, Sarah. <laughs> Love it. Um, and I'm not a public speaker. So, um, okay, so mine's based around sort of six or seven training that we've had before, so bear with me because I've been reading from my script. Okay, um, I'm a district manager at the moment um, and I'm currently an investigator for our local police force. Um, I get to help victims of serious crime through really difficult times um, in their lives, which is really rewarding um, and nice to see something through to the end uh, but it's it's not fun um it's rewarding but it's not fun so um it's long unpredictable hours um and it's something that i didn't want to be doing for the next 20 years um i want to start growing a family and that wasn't going to work um i was introduced by to arvon um, which is a network marketing company dealing with health and wellness which is something i never ever thought i would do um, or be interested in um but I was introduced to it by a work colleague um, who raved about it for ages and I literally just jumped in. I didn't research it, I trusted him um, and I find if I do research then I probably just wouldn't have done it. Um, so I jumped straight in um, and I'm so grateful that I did. I now get to help people every day and actually in a nicer way um, if people want to speak to me um, rather than please they don't want to speak to you. Um, so I'm working towards part time hours um, and not having to work for the police for the next 20 odd years. Wasn't that fantastic? Amazing ladies, three MVPs right there. My name is Teresa Buchanan. I'm an independent consultant, executive regional vice president of Labon International. And today I'm going to be introducing Aisha Ferguson. Aisha is a mum to one gorgeous little boy. She's part of a business entity with her husband, Josh, who was born with a debilitating blood disorder called sickle cell. Before Avon, she was a dancer and an actress, actress, which she still does from time to time, but since has qualified as a nutritional therapist after being inspired by the Avon 30 day detox. In 2014, her district came second in the United Kingdom. <laughs> and she regularly has top districts within her region and nation, who is the amazing Camilla Eves in Canada. She has big vision and big, big plans for the future, so please welcome to the stage, Aisha Ferguson. Wow, thank you so much. Um, I can feel such love in the room, I was nervous. 
this, but now I'm like, this is cool, this is fine. <laughs> um, so before I get started, I always like to share a little bit about me and about my husband as well, so I'm not complete strangers. I don't know many of you here, and I always find it nice when you kind of know someone, you know where they're coming from. Um, so, you see this picture of Rayleigh, so it's me and my husband Josh, which is last year in Vegas. So our son Malachi, who's in Barbados at the moment, with my dad, having the best time ever. Um, but before I started Arbon, as you said, I was a performer. That was my first day on the job in Disney. I've missed me, which is funny. Um, so while we were there, we did all different characters, and it was just literally the best time of my life. And that's all I've done pretty much my entire life. So I say to people, I've got a business. They're like, you? You can only count to wait and read a script. I'm like, I know, it's great. Um, so that's me with um, Princess Tiana, which was so much fun. Um, and in this one, it's quite funny, I'm the monkey in that one. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't meant to be in that picture. Um, and my husband Josh was born with sickle cell, so uh, before he started our one, he was working in retail, doing what he could. Um, but it meant our lives were, one minute everything was fine, the next minute we were in, in hospital, in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, we were on about 15 medications a day, um, and we were in hospital about 15, 20 times a year sometimes. So when we started Arbonne, it was, it was silly because we weren't an entity to begin with. I'd signed him up underneath me. And um, he spent his, the first three years basically rebuilding his district about five times because he was always sick. And that's what we thought, actually, let's just join. Let's just join forces and get this done. Um, and then after we did the detox um, in 2013, something changed and he decided that, you know what, I can actually be better. I can do more and if I, if I change my health. So thank you, Arbon, for the detox and the products, because that really started off in the journey. Um, and now, fast forward a few years, he's on zero medication. So that's what it does. If you want to change your life, no medication at all. Um, um, and in the last year, he's been hospital once, rather than 10, 15, 20 times. So it really can make a difference. We spend our time now helping people with Arbon financially, but also helping them with their health as well. And you get to be part of the family more, which is fantastic. Um, so that's all I have about me. This is blogging wise and workshops. So, firstly, is your business a two legged horse? This is where you have maybe two, three, four people in your business and you think, yes, I've arrived, I've got a team, and you kind of stop building. Um, and a lot of people fall into that trap. But this is what could happen if you build a two legged, wonky business. One person could go into witness protection. Has anyone heard of that place? <laughs> <laughs> you sign someone up and they just vanish. Um, it's happened quite a few times. I don't know where they go, but they go. Um, one of those people could be shopping online for like the product that happens. One person will be active in your business and then you have one serious network marketer, which is usually you. And you find yourself struggling to build this, this business and this team and it's so much hard work and you're wondering why it's not working. It's just that you haven't built wide enough, that's all. So this is some of the problems that can happen when you build a two-legged business and just not enough um, people direct to you. So some of your consultants could pass you in your business um, and that happens when you kind of, well, yeah, yeah, oh, great, you spot to a rock star and they go above you. Um, so that's one problem that could happen. Your consultants could duplicate you and also have a small business and you don't want that. Eventually your team could end up fizzling out. So it means that, because not much is happening, they kind of just fizzle out and fall away and then you've got to start again. Um, it could impact your pay. So I think there's some kind of compensation plan training later, I think. But the, you get paid as wide as you are deep, the way that Arbon um, had the compensation plan. So you want to have a big, wide business. So I'll just share with you a little bit about how wide I've built my business and take you a little peek into what a wide business looks like. Um, so that's my business. I personally sponsored 26 people direct me into my business. Did that in the first three years, I would say, just kept sponsoring, 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 sponsoring. Um, and I'm not saying that everyone here has to sponsor that many direct to you. You might sponsor four and just have four rock stars and go for it straight away. Um, but this is for those people that feel just hard to when they've got four and nothing's happening. You might just need to sponsor more. Um, so in my business, I've had 12 people disappear into witness protection. Um, and the funny thing is, is, some of them still have work for Arbonne on their Facebook status. I'm like, I haven't spoken to you in years. What do you mean work for Arbonne? Um, six of them shop online because they love the product, which is great. I have six direct network marketers to me, which is fantastic. And three super serious network marketers in the business, which is myself, Josh, and my aunt in Texas. 
that out of everyone that I've sponsored direct to me, there's only three people that are really serious and really going for it. Um, and that's why it's so important to keep building no matter what and don't get disheartened when you have a couple of people disappear into witness protection because it happens and that's okay. So I'm skipping this one out, by the way, because we're really worried about time, aren't we? <laughs> Um, so how are you going to build wide? This is my top tip for building wide. So you need activity, consistency, urgency, and that will equal your momentum in your business. So I'll just go over those in a little bit more detail. So what is the activity? This is how you build your business. So there's only three ways to build your album business. And uh, our National Vice President, Camilla, she's always harping on about this. There's three ways. Don't overcomplicate it. It's one-to-ones group presentations or product drops, that is it. It's so simple, so easy, anyone can do this business. And that's the activity that you start with. Then you decide how consistent you want to be um, and how often you want to do this business and how fast you want to go. So everyone in this room is going to be slightly different. We've got different commitments, family, work, whatever it is, but you've got to decide what your consistency level is going to be and you stick to it. So I say treat this business like a job. For some people say it's a business, I can do what I want. Treat it like a job. So schedule your time that you're going to do this business whenever it is, and you stick to it. You show up on time and give you all for that hour. If it's, if it's only an hour, that's what you do. Um, and urgency, this is the key thing that some people miss. They, they're doing their business, but they don't have any urgency. And for me, this is actually really, really important. Because um, as Jennifer said, when you finish your one to one and you say to someone on a scale of one to ten, where are you? If someone says seven, so you schedule a follow-up. By the time they leave you and they go home and they tell their partner who tells them it's crazy and it's a scam and all the rest of it, they're not seven anymore. They're six or five or four or three. It's up to you to keep scheduling those follow-ups and get them in front of your sponsor or your VP or whatever it is so that they will be an eight and a nine and a ten. And the only way that's going to happen is if you have that urgency. They're not going to chase you. You, can, you need to be on the ball and, and go to them. And that's when the momentum happens. Um, so some people, they are, they're in momentum right now in your business and you know it because you're in it. Some people have had it before and so you know what it is and you know how to get it back because you've done it. And some people may have never had it before. But just know that if, you are, if you're consistent with your activity and you have the urgency, the momentum will happen. So just keep doing it. And once you get into it, you'll know it and you'll feel it. It's the most amazing, amazing thing. For some reason, everything just falls into place when you're in momentum. It's, it's something that I can't really put into words, but when you're in it, you'll know it and you'll feel it. It'll be amazing to so keep going. So when all that is said and done, hands up if any of this applies to you. Do you have trouble meeting new people still? Most people do. <laughs> do you find it hard to find new independent consultants and PCs? Do you find it difficult now that you've talked to all your warm market? Now you're thinking, oh, I've got no one else to speak to. Do you feel frustrated at being stuck in your business? A lot of people have that going, oh, what do I do? I'm stuck, I'm stuck. Um, do you feel like you're working really hard for a little result? Does that apply to anyone? I know that was me a while ago. I was like, I'm working so hard, nothing's happening. Um, and do you find yourself wishing it was you promoting so as happy as you are for other people? Do you ever feel to yourself, but that should be me. I've been doing this longer. That person only been doing this 12 months. What are they doing? A VP and not me. And as happy as you are, you sometimes feel that way. Um, do you want to know the secret to build a big business and fast? Who is interested in that? Because I didn't have that. <laughs> um, so this is the key thing. You have to duplicate yourself. So in network marketing, the only thing that matters is what duplicates. It doesn't matter what works for you or the person next to you. The only thing that's going to count is what's going to duplicate throughout your team. So the biggest thing that I'm going to share with you today is starting to do eight group workshops a month, every single month. So for some people, they could start right now because they're in enough momentum to get that going. For other people, it might take them a couple of months to kind of get into it and get into the swing of things. But this is what you can aim to do. So month one, this is a lot of math, and I put more math yay because I'm not a math person. Um, so I have to pretend to be excited about maths. <laughs> um, so write down these numbers, take photos. So in month one, there's you in your business, you do your 150 cubing, okay? You do eight group workshops a month, average at about 500 QV. So, so for some people, they might only average 100 first of all because they're not very good at workshops yet. But the more you do them, the better you'll be found because my first workshops, I had no one buying ever. <laughs> 
what's the point? But now I've kind of got into the swing of it and people need it now. Um, out of those eight group workshops that you do, you meet at least one person who can sign up into your business and they'll do their first business order and make their few sales. Every team is slightly different with their business order. So I've just rounded it down to about 850 QV. For some people, it's 1,000 QV as a sign up order. It depends on what team you're in. So let's just say in month one, you total about 5,000 QV. Month two, now there's you and one other person. So you're both doing your 150 QV. Um, you're both doing eight group workshops each, that totals 16. And then you both sponsor, because you're duplicating, you both sponsor one more person each from your workshop, that's 10,000 QV. So right there, that's AM12. Then you go to month three. So it, you get the picture. It's just going to duplicate and duplicate. So there's now there's four of you doing your 150 QV, just shopping and do what you need to do for, your, for yourself and your family. Um, you're all doing a group workshops, which total 32 group workshops. That number is massive, just by you doing your eight workshops and then duplicating that, which is duplicated to another eight. Um, so all four of you sponsor four new consultants because you're doing so many workshops. You're going to meet so many more people. Of course, you're going to find more people to sponsor, which will total about 20,000 QV. Month four, you get the point. Now there's eight of you doing your 150, and that's duplicating. All eight of you are doing eight group workshops, which again, you're doing your first eight and everyone else is just doing their eight. Then all of you will sponsor one new consultant, so that's eight new consultants in your team. That's already region 12 there. So month five, again, it just duplicates and duplicates and duplicates. Um, by month six, congratulations, you're a new region. Now, I'm not saying that everyone can start today and be there in six months because some people need to get to the momentum first, like I said. So you need to build your team using the activity, consistency, urgency, build up the momentum, start doing your eight group workshops and start duplicating that over and over and over and over again. And that's what will build a big team class and help you to meet new people. Because that's the biggest thing you struggle with. I don't know anyone. Um, but doing workshops, I'm always meeting new people because so-and-so has bought their friend, that person has bought someone else, and that person has bought someone else. This has been amazing. So I have a challenge as well, just like um, Jennifer did as well. Um, so do you want to go to Hawaii? Who do you want to go to Hawaii and be an NBB, right? Good. So all you need to do is pick up the phone and start dialing. That is it. So I challenge you today, before you leave, to call whoever you need to call, make your friends, do what you need to do, make your mum, make your aunt, make your best friend, your cousin, whoever it's going to be, and book in four group workshops today before you leave to get the momentum running because that's where it starts you have to start the ball rolling and um, the saying i think it's robert kiyosaki he says um momentum's like a rule barrow nothing happens until you start to push so there's no point sitting there going oh yeah that was great well done i like that let's actually put it to action and pick up our phones and get them done today so who's up for the challenge who's actually going to do this and book their first four today I need commitment from you guys. <laughs> amazing. That's all it's half the room, which is amazing. So yeah, that's my training. Thank you very much. And I'm on time, which means I'm time for a selfie. Is that okay, guys? All right, okay, so our next speaker is a lady, district manager, Sylvia, now just bear with me on this one, Shipakowska, okay? Do you know how hard it was for me to learn her surname? That's one Polish word, yet this lady is Polish born and bred and she's up here doing her why for 10 minutes in a foreign language. So, you know, that's amazing guys, you know, total respect to Sylvia. So Sylvia uh, joined Arbon uh, the 24th of April, 2015, and she was our first Polish district manager promoted to that team. She did it in two months. 
So, born in Poland, she came to the UK in 2005, 27 years of age. She has one daughter, Susanna, who is eight, and with her partner, Rob, Sylvia attended, uh, attended Arbonne's first year anniversary dinner in October 2014 in the salt mine in Krakow. So, welcome, Sylvia. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I would like to thank you all for coming for, to our Leadership Academy. My name is Sylvia Spakowska, and I'm an independent consultant and district manager with Arbonne International. Before I start, I want to say this is my first time on the stage and my first speech, so I do feel a little bit nervous. And I would never have thought I'll be standing in front of 150 people doing this ever. <laughs> I was asked by my executive regional vice president and friend, Kiana McCarthy, to talk about my wife. As you might have guessed, I was born in Poland and fast forwarding to 2003, I finished university with a master's degree in business and administration. Straight after, I got a job in the city council in the department of taxes. It was great, just what I wanted. I felt so lucky and it was a very difficult time in the job market. My happiness, however, didn't last long. When one year later, my position was given to somebody else and I simply lost my job. With not much experience, it was hard to find anything else. But one day, my friends came to me and said that Tesco is in the UK recruiting lots of people to their new depots. It didn't take me long to make a choice, as well, I was desperate for a job. And to cut the long story short, I sent off an application. Literally, two weeks later, with a suitcase in my hand, I landed for the first time at Stansted, at Stansted Airport in England. I started my job at Tesco's transport office. My plan was to stay in England, maybe one or two years, earn some money, and go back home. But everything changed when I met my English partner and two years later I gave a birth to my daughter Susanna. I don't have any family here so when my maternity finished I had to go back to work and I did so on a part-time basis so I could look after my daughter when my partner was working nights. Money was tight but we got by and done it so often in the case we just muddled through and it became our accepted way of life. The seminal moment that really began to change things was about two years ago when I succumbed to a viral infection that put me out of action for almost six months. The infection had affected my liver functions and as my father had died at the age of 45 with the liver cancer, you can imagine what thoughts were going through my head. However, during the time I was off work, battling with my illness, I had plenty of time to think about my life. I had taken a huge leap of faith in leaving my homeland, and was grateful for the opportunities that the change had brought, not least of which meaning a wonderful supportive man and having a beautiful daughter, I still felt that there was more for me to achieve personally in my work life. I simply did not feel empowered to be a mistress of my own destiny, No mentally stretched to fulfill the potential I thought I had. I knew I would have to find something different. A few months later, one of the moms from my daughter's school invited me for, the first, for her first business presentation. The company was called Arbon, which I confess I had never heard of before. Looking forward to a night out with the girls, I had little idea that that night out was to change my life in a such a positive, positive way. And how? 
At the presentation, I met Fiona McCarthy, typically full of enthusiasm and exuberance. And she was talking about Arbonne's products and business model. She also talked about having a plan B and how this could She also talked about having a plan B and how this could help people develop a better lifestyle, take ownership of their destiny, and through hard work and commitment, develop a lucrative business. I took some products home to try, and I was amazed. Something happened to me. For the next few days, I literally could not eat or sleep. I was so excited, and I really don't know why. <laughs> I fell in love with the products right away, but also realized that this could be the something that I was looking for and a golden opportunity, which does not come along very often in life, to start a lifestyle career where I make the decision and manage the pace of my own business. I met Fiona three days later for coffee, and when she asked me if I would be interested in taking the first step on my upward journey, I had no hesitation in saying yes. I did not see myself as an instant entrepreneur. I just wanted to learn all about and use those fantastic products. But somehow, as days passed, something clicked. I watched some presentations, started searching on the internet about the company, tried, tested, and started using all the products. And from that point, there was no way back for me. Before Arbonne, I had no idea of how to change what I was doing. Embracing Arbonne opened my mind to the possibilities and potential of making a better life for myself and my family. Arbonne is giving me now the opportunity not only to have a financial freedom, but also to be a part of a community within Arbonne that supports and nurtures its members at every level of the organization. I have had the opportunity for more training in the last year than in a previous 10 with a major PLC. I have met fantastic people Traveled, traveled this country and abroad, including taking part in the celebrations of Arbonne's first anniversary in Poland. Expanded my product knowledge, learned new skills, and grown as a person. In less than four weeks' time, I will be attending Arbonne's GTC in Las Vegas. That's a long way to have to go from when I packed my suitcase 10 years ago in Poland to take a step into unknown. And the great thing about Arbonne is that those opportunities are open to everyone who has the vision and motivation to change their lives for better. A new chapter of my life started with Arbonne. I choose how successful I'm going to be, and my results and rewards are direct consequence to my input. I really couldn't be happier now. <laughs> and as Arbonne has nurtured and developed me as a person, I hope that I can impart that some focus, support, and understanding to my team of consultants and they to theirs. And that is the unique future of the Arbon family. Whilst building our own future, we are also interested in supporting each other and take pride from each other's success. I wanted to be able to build security for myself and my family so in the future I can be present with my partner and daughter to do whatever it is we want. I have become stronger. I've started believing in myself and I'm looking forward to helping people in a similar situation to me to become more than they ever thought they could be and to become more so they can have more. So that's my story of why. I found it all in Arbonne and I'm forever thankful for introducing me to this company. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of your day. Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Linda Davis-Carr, and I'm um, 
the regional vice president, Alan Bristol. So thank you, Julie, for driving this morning so for me. <laughs> I've known for several years, and Suzanne, I was lucky enough to share an apartment with when we went to see Go, when we went to Eric Worry in Manchester and GoPro in November. And um, the stories I could tell you about that, but that's a whole other evening. <laughs> here we go. So here we go. There, their bio. Suzanne joined in August 2014, was a district manager by January 2015, an area manager by October, and then she achieved the um, incentive areas in paradise. And I'm sure you've seen the fantastic pictures in Arizona last week. So they only got back this week. Grandma to three, can you believe it? Our products are that good, yeah. Works four days a week in an accountant. She's a classic baby boomer and started Arbonne as her retirement plan. She's joined by Executive Regional Vice President Fiona, who has earned the incentive chip five times. Wow. <laughs> in New York trip twice, I'm sure she'll show you the bleeding glass really nicely. And, and I've got this loads here, so bear with me, yeah. 2010, top sponsor in the UK, 2011 as well. Oh, 2012 as well. And the third circle of excellence in the UK. Also in 2013, she was a third circle of excellence. In 2014, she was an ACE award winner. There's more. In 2015, she was placed third top central sponsor and spoke at AAC in 2010. She spoke at GTC in 2011, I'm nearly there. She spoke at AAC in 2013 and spoke at the Roadshow in the UK in 2014. She has also just returned from Areas in Paradise. I was so privileged to bring both of them to the, the stage this afternoon, this morning. Thank you very much. <laughs> Right, good morning everybody. I am Susan Wells, area manager and independent consultant with Arbonne International. I hope you're all having a great time this morning. <laughs> our appearance before we turn up for one-to-one presentations and workshops. So can I please have my volunteers on stage? District Manager Danny Cowie, District Manager Lucy Harvey, Area Manager Jennifer Cowie, District Manager Ian Wells and District Manager in Consultation Danny here. Um, That's my task, by the way, they're not Jen. So. <laughs> so I'm going to ask us an audience participation here. Don't be shy, shout out, point to be involved. So, can I just shout out, just you know, a couple of words here and there. What was your first impression? Nice work. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. <laughs> Anything else? Power <laughs> <laughs> okay, now next question, shout out again, 
would you go into business with them? Yes, so this is Ed, Stacey Good. Anybody else? Who put your hands up if you're a yes? So maybe not even a third of the room. <laughs> but the majority is like somewhere. <laughs> Around here. <laughs> 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 Luckily, this test goes well. <laughs> but look, 
luckily they have been warned and hopefully they have been prepared. So we will see them all later on to see the transformation hopefully in the <laughs> <laughs>